There are two things that are insanely popular right now in the car world, subcompact crossovers and nostalgia. That's why Chevrolet decided to come out with a car that would fit both. Our spotlight is on this 2021 Chevrolet Trailblazer Active. Now this is a subcompact crossover unrelated to the midsize SUV Chevrolet sold from 2002 to 2009. Now it is larger than the Chevrolet Trax and smaller than the Equinox. There are a number of different drivetrain and engine options available. The front wheel drive only model uses a 1.2 liter engine with a CVT that produces 137 horsepower and 162 pound feet of torque. Our all wheel drive model uses a 1.3 liter engine and a nine speed automatic transmission, producing a little bit more, 155 horsepower and 174 pound feet of torque. Now what's interesting, at least for us here in the North American market, is this is a three cylinder car. We don't find these too often here in Canada. Now the Active and RS are the two top trends. They're basically the same kit, but they have different looks. Our Active comes with functional skid plates and off-road suspension tuning. If you go with the RS, it's more of a sport look to it. The front end slightly different with Chevy's RS design language to it. We have the tech package, which adds active cruise control, an eight inch Chevy infotainment three plus system that has wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android auto, Bose audio system, HD radio, Sirius XM, and an HD backup camera. Along with that, you also get a 4.2 inch driver information screen and front LED headlights instead of the halogens that would come without the tech package. It also requires the $695 convenience package, which adds automatic single zone climate control, a USB-C port, a 120 volt power outlet, an auto dimming rear view mirror, and the illuminated vanity mirror visors. Now this car is pretty well equipped, a little pricey over some of the competition, but there are some interesting things to note when it comes to the features. This has a full panoramic sunroof, which you don't usually find in the subcompact market, along with a power opening rear lift gate with foot activation. Again, something that you don't usually find. However, the interior kit is a little Spartan. We only have front heated seats with power driver. There's no ventilation and there's no heated steering wheel. Outboard heated seats, not existent either and there is no center vent in the center console area for the rear passengers like some of the competition out there on the market but this three cylinder engine might surprise you as it did with me so let's hit the road we'll take this 2021 chevrolet trailblazer active on the road and see what it has to offer and see if it's worth your hard-earned thirty-five thousand dollars canadian Well, folks, if you were hoping for a injection of nostalgia when it came to the Trailblazer, unfortunately, you're not going to find it. This is not the rebirth of that mid-2000s SUV. This is just a name on a crossover, but it's not a bad thing. This vehicle is actually built in Korea by GM Korea. This would have been a Daewoo, I guess, if uh, things had changed with that manufacturer over the course of its run, but this is a Chevrolet Trailblazer now. And you gotta say, it's it's not bad overall. The first thing that I noticed when I got behind the wheel of this thing was just how peppy the engine is. That's the whole point of the title here, because that's really what shocked me. It's a 1.3 liter engine, which is already small, and then add on the fact that it's only got three cylinders is pretty much unheard of here in North America. Now, I know those of you in Europe are laughing at me right now because it's a lot more common in Europe to have these smaller engines, smaller displacement and less cylinders, but here we just don't see it. So it's a plus for us to have something that's different. And like I say, it is a surprisingly peppy engine. I was able to get up to speed, no problem. 155 horsepower, doesn't sound like a ton, but it's a pretty light car overall. So you're not really being bogged down by the weight of the vehicle. This has a nine speed automatic transmission. I found that it works well, certainly a lot better than the CVT that would come on the 1.2 liter engine. So you do have that as a plus and fuel economy has been really, really good. 5.9 liters per 100 kilometers us miles per gallon are below as always that is compact sedan front wheel drive levels there now part of the reason why we're getting those numbers is because of the engine and transmission but also something that we do find with gm vehicles is there is a button for all wheel drive now that's different from some other vehicles that allow you to enable four wheel drive or all wheel drive all the time. This essentially disengages the rear wheels completely. So when I did our 100 kilometer test loop, 
the rear wheels were never a factor. It was front wheel drive only, and that was it. And that's why I was able to get better fuel economy numbers than we have on some of the other subcompact crossovers in this segment, because those vehicles, there's no choice. You either have all wheel drive locked in, or it'll do it automatically and it will do it while you're doing it. Now I feel that this Chevrolet Trailblazer would be ideal in a climate that doesn't get as cold as we see here in Quebec. The fact that there's no heated steering wheel. Okay, I know some of you might think that I'm being a bit of a princess, but it's Canada. We get sub zero temperatures almost half of the year, specifically here in Quebec. And almost every car offers a heated steering wheel, a lot of them at the base trim. This doesn't offer it at all. Rear seat space, it, the space is okay, but there is no heat back there for the rear seats, the outboard seats, and there's no air vent in the center armrest. So you're losing out on airflow, you're losing out on heated seats. That's something that, again, we typically find in this segment. So a couple little misses there, plus some of the you know, cost cutting measures that come on this vehicle were apparent to me. Interior incandescent light bulbs, I guess it's not a huge miss, but then the front lights that you pay for to get LED headlights don't include LED high beams. You have halogen high beams, so don't even use them. You know, even though there are, GM calls it IntelliBeam, automatic high beam assist, I just skip it. You know, they're so bad, they don't really perform that well, that you might as well just keep the LED headlights and LED fog lights on and use that if visibility is low. But for the most part, this has been a pretty good week with this. If you're buying this as a daily commuter, I wouldn't complain too much about it. The technology on here is good, it's not great, and the interior road noise is good as well, along with the ride and handling. It's been smooth on the road for what we would want out of a subcompact crossover. The thing is though, the Trailblazer just doesn't stand out as doing anything better than any of the other vehicles on the market. Sure, you do have wireless Apple CarPlay, which is a nice plus today, but I imagine in a year or two, most of the other manufacturers will have that incorporated. The rear power opening lift gate, again, that's a nice plus, but it's not something that we won't see down the road. So if you're buying a 2021 today and you want those features today, then it is a great plus. And if you don't mind the things that are missing, then I wouldn't be too upset. But the thing is, it just doesn't excel at anything other than being you know, a good all around vehicle because pricing isn't that great either. 35,000 for this one, yeah, you start taking off some of the packages, you're losing a lot of the features that we really would want to have at a vehicle that costs about $3,000 less. So price is a little high. And the only reason I can think of that is because GM has to import it from Korea and they aren't going to be importing as many vehicles as Kia or Hyundai. So it's going to cost them more to bring this vehicle to North America. If you have a better idea as to why this costs more than a comparable, whether it's the Hyundai Kona or Kia Seltos, let me know, but I'm thinking that that's part of the reason. Because in terms of the rest of the interior and exterior, this doesn't have anything that's better than any of those. So if you're looking for a entry level Chevrolet, this will be good for you. I've been happy with it. I've been driving around, I do like it. A little bit more surprising than I expected it to be. And it goes to show you that even in the subcompact crossover market, there are really great options in here. It really isn't the entry level. You take a look back at subcompact cars of a decade or two ago, and they were pretty miserable. But even the entry levels of these are really good. You're gonna appreciate the fuel savings with this vehicle and the fact that you can put it into all wheel drive or front wheel drive and some of the other convenient stuff. But let me know in the comments below what you think about the Trailblazer. Obviously, this is more of a nostalgia name than it is a rebirth of a proper midsize SUV. But let me know in the comments below about what you think of this vehicle and if there's something else that you would like to see in this segment. We will be trying to do some showdowns and other episodes in the subcompact crossover market since they are pretty hot these days. Until next time, thanks for watching. Take care.